What's up, everybody? Welcome to the State of Wild, episode 126, a regular YouTube video web series podcast thingy. My name is Meowth, and as usual, I'm joined by two good friends and co host Raffle and Corbett. Guys, how you doing tonight? You know, I'm doing pretty good. You know, despite all our naysaying in the last episode, um, Wild has been saved. It, it, our savior arrived in the form of Matt London this week, and we have nothing left to do but celebrate, right? Yeah, um, uh, very uncommon L from myself and Ruffle, like talking people down the uh, <laughs> the, the hype of the changes and things like that. But I I was shocked. I did not expect the changes at all. Like completely caught me off guard. And I am not upset about it. I'll I'll happily be wrong about this one. It's a win win. Yeah, yeah. I will gladly take this L. Yeah, it was. This is the epitome of have no expectations so that you were extremely happy when something does happen. Right, like I think that's that's y'all's reaction to the this this news, um, and so in case you guys have no idea what we're talking about, you guys must be living under a rock because we we got first time in Hearthstone history balance patch that happened last week uh, on Thursday. So we're recording on Monday, so we've had a little bit of time to you know test and digest. But uh, they addressed three wild specific decks in, in a singular balance patch. Uh, this is this is huge. Um, all the things that we've been talking about, uh, you know, over the past couple of weeks, they had this little wild summit that you guys made fun of, and voila, uh, this this is something, right? I don't know if it's the the start or the end or who knows, but this is something. We got some huge balance patches, uh, or huge balance patch rather, some huge changes. Uh, I'm just gonna touch on the three cards that got touched, the three decks, and then we can kind of just like free form discussion from here. Uh, so the big ones for wild that we need to care about: Gray Sage Parrot. Now only repeat spells uh, that cost six or more. So basically no more looping with Time Warp, the mage quest. Uh, Spectral Pillager. Uh, they war sung the crap out of this card. Um, th this card went from six mana, six, six. You guys all know what Spectral Pillager does. Uh, to a five mana, five, five. Deal two damage to a minion for each other card you've played this turn. Uh, and then Cataclysm. Kind of also feel like they, uh, they war sung this card when it came to specifically... The deck in discard warlock that they were trying to target uh where it is five mana destroy all minions discard two cards all right just open floor initial reactions before we dive into the into the specifics of the cards how happy were you guys with this balance patch i mean you're leaving out a real big one too because uh, they also nerfed construct quarter to four mana which was dominating the wild format, uh, thanks to Corb, who, as usual, saw deck performing well in standard, uh, added Lotheb, and <laughs> won games. Like that, that deck was actually like I played that deck on my climb to diamond. It was not. I lost one game. It was nuts. Like it, it was arguably one of the best decks in the format at at the time, as just like twenty nine standard cards. So, I thought it, thought we mentioned that we can talk more about construct corridor later uh, if you want, but. Um, in general, I was I was very surprised, um, not just by the timing of the patch, uh, the the changes that seemed to like echo some of the player sentiment and player requests, especially Grace Age Parrot. I think that that was exactly what people wanted. I think deleting Pillager was pretty close to what people wanted, uh, and Cataclysm kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but. All of these cards remain playable with the exception of uh, Spectral Pillager. Uh, unless you consider like the goofy Ash Tongue yeah, combo to be real, but that's not. Um, like, Grace Age Parrot does what it was intended to do, like which is repeat big spells without looping infinite turns. Cataclysm. Um, probably a pretty good mass removal spell at, at five mana like it's a five mana twisty nether where you you do lose some cards like it's at worst at least worth a consideration when we're in like a highly aggressive metagame it's kind of similar to um what is it the four mana like deal five um except uh, soul you lose cards from hand. soul run yeah. yeah you lose cards from hand instead of uh, deck which cards in hand are more valuable but clearing the entirety of a big board is more valuable as well so uh, interesting changes all around. Yeah, it uh, like I said, definitely caught me off guard. Um, this this was just such a 
uh, such an interesting patch where they hadn't ever done anything really like this. Um, the closest thing that I could think of was um, Odd Hunter and Ignite Mage, uh, which was you know about a year ago, where. Uh, the weird thing about this patch is obviously that it went kind of against what they typically do for wild. Like it's very out of the ordinary where they usually just come in when a deck is like 20% of the format is broken win rate. Uh, you know, it's like got super bad play patterns and then they just got it in the first two weeks. It's very rare that like they never make changes after it kind of passes that initial window. Um, and the specific changes they did are very different as well. Um, where... Basically, I, I did a video where I was kind of just reacting to the patch, and my big takeaway is, like, yeah, this is obviously just a patch that was aimed at, like, highly engaged players, at high MMR players, specifically, and at content creators, I think. Um, like, I think this is why there's a bit of confusion, it seems like, if you scroll through Reddit comments or Twitter comments and things like that, it's like, why did you hit this, this, and this? And it's like, well, because the patch probably wasn't aimed for you. Like, uh, the, the patch is aimed at the aforementioned players that I talked about. Um, and it's probably why I'm so damn happy about it, because I'm the target audience of this patch. Like, I'm thrilled. It's, I love it. I'm not wondering why didn't they do this. I'm like, oh my god, they did this. Oh my god, yeah. it's incredible. Yeah, and I feel like in line with what you were talking about, it, it being a pretty, like, unique patch, that in and of itself, like, targeting that demographic of Wild is uh, pretty rare as well. Like, a lot of times, you know, some of the, some of the combos that do get axed aren't even necessarily good <laughs> or like the the best deck in the format they're just like you know they they find their way down the ladder where you know they hit a point where a lot of people are dealing with them you know the vast majority of players aren't dealing with these three decks um you know as regularly as high legend players are yeah like uh pillager for example um for like legend as a whole it was only like four percent of the play rate now that like that like doubled by the time you got the high legend but it was like four percent of legend and then it was like two percent of like diamonds like less than two percent of diamond and it's like can you imagine nerfing a deck in wild that has a two percent play rate of diamond like it, that's what makes this is so weird and unusual and um a fantastic direction i think matt london and team <laughs> yeah i i do think it's important to note because i think a lot of people are complaining about like why not touch secret mage why not touch big priest and things like that and i think those are very valid questions to have when they see this balance patch um but I, i'm going to continue to huff that copium you know that good stuff from that wild summit and this is hopefully just the start uh well, of maybe good i mean that was, it was directly stated that this was yeah. the the start so yeah i i mean we can just talk about the matt london like he he did the dev notes on twitter like we normally see from aleko um and so he he specifically covered the whole why this combo and not the other combo um and so he's basically talking about for this round we looked at consistency the ability to interact with the combo play frequency win rate public sentiment um and so you know we're not trying to kill anybody's pet deck and then in the actual patch note um we don't view these changes as exhaustive we're working on more long-term updates that we're excited to share once they're more solidified so you know, probably, I, I I don't know what that means. I don't want to read too much into it. I know we, we did that last week, and I, I paid off for doing that, but I'm not going to do it twice in a week. I'm not going to not gonna test my luck. Uh, interesting about this, uh, interesting about this is that there does some, seem to be, like, a bit of a conflict between the patch notes themselves and the Matt London's commentary uh, about the patch notes, where directly in the patch notes, um, like you said, it says, uh, we don't view these changes as exhaustive, but we're working on some more long-term updates. Um things like that and then within the matt london uh sort of quote tweet talking about we're not committing to maintaining this policy in the future we're trying this approach this round and seeing what effect it has um but we're not interested in the endless game of whack-a-mole in, in wild so there there is sort of like a bit of curbing of expectations but it is a little strange i think to see the two different types of language from the official notes and then matt london yeah i, I think a couple things in in regard to that first uh, I, I don't necessarily see them as like entire entirely incongruent like um what he's what matt seems to be saying is we're not going to step in and intervene with every combo deck that um you know does from hand damage or even like any individual deck like these were pretty low-hanging fruit changes that they can just make get a good response from and and move on um but i don't think that type of change specifically is uh what they're looking to do i think a Potentially what that could mean is a larger scale overhaul of uh, of the format to kind of 
potentially future proof that type of change. Uh, I don't know what that would mean, whether it's like a rotating ban list or rotating formats, whatever the case may be. Um, that it, it seems to be that whatever it is that they're mentioning in the patch notes seem to be a, a larger scale, bigger, like format wide change rather than individual card changes. Now, considering decks like Secret Mage, even Shaman, the, I mean, honestly, a real reason why they weren't included, even Pirate Rogue you could throw in there is like, you can't isolate a single card in those situations on a quick turnaround like this and just say, this is the problem card. If we pull this out, that deck either becomes significantly weaker or stops doing its thing. Um, so like those decks have hit that critical mass of like hyper synergistic mechanics where they can afford to lose a card or two and still be like cohesive decks. Even if you outright delete certain cards, they're still going to be on the ladder and still going to be irritating people. Like, outside of large-scale overhauls, I don't know how you solve those problems because eventually they'll print more cards that will and find their way into Secret Mage and just w the cycle will, will repeat, you know? Yeah, that, that is a little bit how I read into it as well. I'm The the comment where they, they say we don't view these changes as exhaustive and we're working on more long-term updates, like that's the part that has me convinced. We're, we're going to we're gonna see more things, and so if you are somebody that hates big priest right or something like that or hate secret mage maybe there maybe there's something coming <laughs> in, in the future um but for now i will say i uh i was at a town this weekend but i played more hearthstone this weekend on my phone than i did like the entirety of all of february because i didn't even hit legend in february for the first time in six years because i just didn't enjoy the format but these changes it just feels like you're able to play the decks that we've talked about in the past on the podcast of like being able are enjoying playing stuff like beast hunter and beast druid and decks like that where your decisions kind of matter when you're playing for the board and things like that and, and i had a lot of fun it was a breath of fresh air um and i and i've been enjoying the format a lot more after this uh after this patch how, how are you guys feeling about like just actually playing the format now now that those three decks kind of don't exist I feel like what it did for me is it kind of opened up the uh, the top end of the format. Like we have, we've talked about like the the window of acceptable turns on Hearthstone. Aggro is obviously condensing it on on that end uh, or, or on the front end, but on the back end, these types of combo decks were preventing you from like aiming towards those last few turns. So it does it relieves a little bit of the pressure and the tension there by um, you know removing those just quick from hand combos that. Um, that prevent anything from going long or, you know, playing any amount of uh, greed, um, which, you know, quite honestly still isn't good. The format isn't completely solved by these three changes because, like, you still have the aggressive decks running rampant that aren't really all that uh, susceptible to, um, you know, removal and that type of thing. Um, so, like, yeah, we're in, the format's in a better spot, I agree. It's not completely solved, but I don't think that was the intention of these. I think it was just to move the format into a better, more tolerable spot, which I think it accomplished. Um, me personally, what I, the reason I've been having fun playing Hearthstone is because, like you, I didn't hit Legend um, last month, so I'm still just hanging out at Diamond 10, and I'm not running into the bots because they've already passed me to Diamond 5. I'm just, like, I'm goofing around with... Uh, with a bunch of nonsense. I, I, I queued into the most absurd quest priest, like, not long ago, and it was... It was, it was silly. So, yeah. Um, I, but even then, I feel like, you know, the the format is just like markedly better at uh, at uh, once you cross a certain threshold of rank, for sure. Yeah, I've uh, I've been thrilled with the the changes and how the the game has felt. Um, yeah, like it's just been much more like having having a much more positive experience on stream and things like that. Willing to stream a lot more. Uh, there's kind of a few weeks off where I was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. Um, and so yeah, I feel I feel great. Like uh, not having to sit through the ten minute quest mage turn, like not having to endure that on stream is fantastic. Like not getting cataclysm is great, and um, there's still like combo decks and things like running around, but. Uh, like, like the the quest mage, in particular, just was so egregious in terms of its and unique in terms of its uh sort of late game combo, um, that it just made you suffer. <laughs> and so replacing that with something that is also a combo deck from hand damage but just kills you just makes the whole experience much more palatable. 
Um, so I really like that. Uh, Cataclysm, getting kind of like nuked from the format has been great. Like, I feel like I can experiment so much more with board-based decks. I had a lot of fun kind of testing out this weird Silence Priest, which I would not have been willing to play um, before the balance patch. So I, I think it's been great. Like, uh, it, like Ruffle said, it's not, it's not like every issue in the format was addressed, but um, I'm again there's much more focus on what we did get hit than rather worrying about what we necessarily didn't because these three things were like at the top of my list there's a fourth and a fifth and things like that but they hit the big three that i was hoping for um so yeah i i've just been really really happy with the the format since the since the patch dropped yeah yeah i think like whether or not the upcoming changes are what we want it also gives a little bit of like hope and something to look forward to as well like even if you're not having the most fun possible right now like you know we we can at least at the very least they committed to communicating what their vision of the format is which is something that's kind of been not really well defined in the past we've just had to like make assumptions based on some of the changes and behavior that they've had and so clear communication on what they define and what they have expectations for for the wild format can help us properly set expectations so that we're not disappointed every time a balance patch runs through, you know? Yeah, it's like clear communication on all that stuff is kind of this all we would crave, right? Like even if they, like I'm saying, like even if they don't touch something, the saying, hey, here's why we didn't touch it, is just like helpful and, you know, helps uh, helps set future expectations like you know, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I think based upon all the criteria and stuff that we've talked about, I think this patch was like a major success right especially for what their criteria for all of this was that was stated um and i do want to say that i i do feel for a lot of the uh the player base that is asking like what about secret mage what about big priest and i i hope that there's something coming for those players as well but i will also say that it, it has made it on a you know personal from a personal side <laughs> i am very happy with the patch because it was i was the one percent that this patch was kind of targeted for and I'm very happy with that. Um, do we want to talk about particular, like the particular decks themselves, uh, you know, that are benefiting from the patch? Like, what what is the meta kind of looking like for you guys? Um, yeah, with with Quest Mage, with Quest Mage as we knew it gone, uh, with Discard Warlock as we knew it gone, and with Pillager deleted from the format. How are we feeling about uh, about the format? What what are some of the new things that you guys have seen pop up? Corb, I know you talked about a Silence Priest. But I, I feel like we could just safely say all three of those decks were deleted. Like, yes, you could continue looping with Romnath. No, it's not reliable. Yes, you can still play like a tempo discard, but that hasn't been good in a long time. Like, it, it's those decks have probably just been deleted, and that's probably for the best. Um, well, you can still still do like Vargoth time warp things, right? Theoretically, okay, yeah, and you can still do Silas Silas Ash Tongue uh, Pillager things. So, yeah. like. I've seen the clips. Yeah, like, there, there's a difference in <laughs> there's a massive, massive difference in reliability there. Um, so, and the like the cost associated with it too, right? Like you can you you have to wait till turn nine with either Romnath or Vargoth. So I think those decks are just deleted. Um, big winner seems to be Shaman, right? Like Shaman is already doing well with even Shaman. Uh, Shadowwalk Shaman can now like be that answer to some of the aggressive decks in the format because it can um respond in kind with like the murloc package in wiping the board and like i say decks aren't susceptible to removal but it's not just the removal that uh, allows uh free shaman to be like uh, a force in the metagame it's the ability to simultaneously remove the board and develop relevant threats on top of that so it seems to be good um druid which was struggling pre-patch <laughs> has uh opened up a, a lot of breathing room as well um and it i hate to say it but i think maybe certain builds of big priest can just start winning enough against the aggro to to be relevant because like all three of the decks that got hit would just decimate big priest so like any deck that lo that loses three highly unfavored matchups in its entirety is going to get better um so those seem like the big winners from my perspective, but I'm playing at uh, silly ranks where I don't see any of those decks, so it's great. Uh, yeah, I, I think like 
I don't even know if you call them big winners. Like, is Shaman, a, is even Shaman a big winner because it's still the best deck? Like, I don't know. It doesn't really change his position, in my opinion. Um, I think, like, decks that kind of move up the tier list and things like that, uh, that become a lot more viable is something like, uh, like Cthune Druid. I, th I think Cthune Druid becomes a lot better in this format where combo is, you know, uh, taken a little bit of a backseat, uh, for the majority of players and there's a lot more aggro and things like that. Uh, so I, th I think Cthune Druid's a big one um even death knight like even death knight was already very very good but it picks up like construct quarter uh which i think is probably going to be a, a a good card especially in the unholy list it feels really strong in that one um and again another deck that really benefits from there being less combo in the format because it's so good into other aggressive mirrors uh things like that so i think like those are two of the top tier decks uh that have benefited a lot um I think Secret Mage took a fat L. <laughs> like, I think Secret Mage is uh, kind of in a disaster scenario right now. Like, I think that deck has plummeted. Right now, if I was doing a tier list and I was doing it on my Discord and things like that, I might put Secret Mage in tier 3. Like, probably low tier 3. Like, it's not doing fantastic in a format with not as much combo, way more aggro. And um, it is kind of funny, because when the patch came out, I saw so many comments that were just like, oh my god, we're in a big pre-Secret Mage meta. And it's like, they know if the combo decks... So Secret Mage gets better? Question mark? <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's not, not quite how it works. Yeah, I, I did see a lot of comments that were kind of related to that. And I, I didn't think that a lot of people kind of understood that when you when you nerf these combo decks, there's also now breathing room for all these anti-aggro decks to kind of prop up and exist and flourish because they're not worried about dying on turn four to, to combo. And so I, I would expect decks like Reno Priest to come back. Uh, and get a lot stronger. I was gonna say even lock until they nerfed Null to eleven, but we'll get that back in two months. Uh, you know, go back in time and edit that last podcast episode that we did the reversions on, and just add Null and say hundred percent yes revert. <laughs> um, and I, I think a lot of those decks get a lot better. I like you said, I think Cthulhu Druid uh, was a huge winner, right? Because it it kind of just auto lost against a lot of the the combo matchups. Uh, and you mentioned Big Priest. Like, what about just Big Shaman? Like. It, it used to just farm aggro, right? And if we're not going to see a ton of, like, specifically Secret Mage, it should be very, very good. Yeah, that's not a common uh, call-out, but I think it's probably probably a good look. Um, like, yeah, I can't, like, steal games on turn one or two anymore, but, like, it still serves a purpose as a really strong anti-aggro deck. I, I got hit by a Chadius with it just earlier today, and I was like, oh, that's really bad for me. <laughs> and, like, if you can't kill the Chadius on turn, you know, four or five, uh, you, they're going to get a lot of value off of that. Um, and, like, even to a lesser extent, something like a, a cold storage can be beneficial in a deck like that just for slowing things down. So it, it got some it got some new tools. And then I know you mentioned this at the beginning, but, like, I feel like Beast Hunter is probably in a good spot just because it lost the... Um, the accidental whoopsie you died into pillager and then like the cataclysm clears uh from disco lock so i think that uh beast hunters you know probably a good card deck to mention as well just because like it's it's always good it just like you know lost some pretty frustrating matchups uh, i don't know how you know consistently it could uh rush through the ice blocks against secret mage even so or not secret mage uh, quest mage so like it might have lost two kind of annoying matchups even though um you know it's it's fairly aggressive it it can still struggle into um into good draws and uh, ice block generation with uh with quest mage so um yeah i i think uh a lot of i think things are a little bit open right now um as people are still trying to sift through and just like actually taking a moment again it could just be the ranks i'm playing out but it seems like people are taking more of a moment to like try things that mm -hmm. you know the format was so limiting before they're just like why don't we try this for a bit like i mean you could you wouldn't see a big shaman uh prior to these three decks getting nerfed because like it just is a free win for <laughs> those three decks yeah uh kind of related to the uh the beast hunter comment i think it's also important to note that i think maybe like a week or two before this big balance patch we also had that huge update to minion tribes um and so there's a lot of mech beasts now that maybe are worth looking at in Hunter specifically when related to Beast Hunter. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree. Meta meta feels a lot more open. Who knows if it'll stay the same in, in three or four weeks, but <laughs> until people finally pick up on what the, the next busted deck is. Um, but yeah, it, 
is are we confident in saying Wild has been saved? Are we are we happy to say that? No. Um I am very confident in saying that it is a very um solid step in the right direction for like um fixing some of the issues with the format. Because like at its core, I don't know entirely that Wild needs like is in desperate need of saving. Um you know, that I think it just needs some direction and we haven't seen that for a while because they've been pretty you know limited incentive or desire it seems to to do much with it um yeah the wild wild is saved uh yeah i don't know wild wild isn't saved but like like i didn't address like every single issue but um they didn't really have to right they didn't really have to like fix the whole thing in one giant swoop so it doesn't really matter if the format is saved or not like ruffle said it's just a positive direction that we're heading in um i think that it's god i I can't even imagine playing this last month of wild if there wasn't this change like this would be horrific before heading into the next expansion and the reverts and things like that um and yeah now now we do have that little bit of breathing room um so we'll we'll see we'll see where things end up landing but i think the next month is going to be much more tolerable than it otherwise would have been yeah i i think the vibes are a lot better and i think just based on that it, it's been a success right because like we mentioned at the beginning this was targeted at a very small percentage of the player base and it seems like that percentage of the player base you know is a lot happier with the format and is playing a lot more and so therefore i think i think it's a success but but yeah, hopefully in another couple of weeks or month, uh, we come back and talk about uh, some other changes, right, that they've alluded to, and that makes maybe more of the player base a lot happy. Um, but yeah. Since I'm part of the player base that isn't mm-hmm. terribly affected by this, like, I, I, I can still recognize that it's a good thing overall for the format and for the entirety of the player base that they are taking steps to intervene on this. And, like, at the end of the day, I think... Simply ask yourself the question, is after these changes, is Wild a better format? And I think it's a resounding yes. Like, absolutely. Those ty- Like, even if they weren't popular in your rank band, when you did encounter those types of decks, it w- they were uniquely very frustrating to play against. So I think that Wild... The the question shouldn't be, is Wild saved? Is, is Wild better than it was last week? And, you know, just look at our faces. Yes, absolutely. So to wrap up the uh, the episode here, um, I kind of want to just let's let's dive into the specific cards themselves, right? So we talked about how Pillager has kind of just been war songed; it's kind of unplayable. Parrot is a little bit more geared towards what it was intended for, right? Repeating big spells, not specifically time warp. Um, but Cataclysm, this is one when we were going through them initially. You know, you, you kind of mentioned that it could be kind of like a soft buff, right, for like a control deck. Uh, I mean, let's just dive in a little bit on, on Cataclysm itself. How does this affect, you know, the Discard Warlock as we knew it? And maybe where do we see both Discard Warlock and Cataclysm kind of going moving forward? Yeah, well, the the Discard Warlock that we knew is dead. Like, that that deck is gone. So don't have to stress about that. Um, but Cataclysm now is actually like a very... Well, there's a few things. Like It's an interesting change. I, I think that we can talk about, like... The specific changes in a second to like why they went in that direction because that, that that's kind of interesting um but cataclysm what they did like there there is kind of hope in the future i think or there is a foundation for a control disco warlock which i know sounds a little bit silly but if you do have like slower payoffs um for a, a discard shell where you do have things like plague explosion right which is the the deal three aoe if you've discarded a card to three um even just having like barrage or having things like hand of gul'dan like these are still like very useful cards and slower archetypes and so uh i think like cataclysm being this once uh you know just like a five mana nuclear board and discard cards and sometimes you get an extra payoff out of it like that's something that's uh kind of pretty useful for the future um as for disco lock specifically like the the something that we've kind of seen you know more recently I actually don't know if the deck is dead. <laughs> like, this type of build is gone, but the idea of there not being a viable discard Warlock, I find it a little hard to believe. I know the win rates right now are complete garbage and things like that. I'm assuming that's largely because people are just trying the old list. Um, but I still think, like, Malkim, really good. Expired Barrage, really good. And I still think there's going to be, like, some shell 
whether it's more of a cute warlock direction or like whether you just have to chuck in cards like Fellstalker and Darkshire Librarian um, instead of Cataclysm, things like that. I still think there might be something viable there. It'll just be a much less frustrating version of the deck, even if it is uh, viable. Yeah, I think that like as you're describing those cards, I'm just shaking my head like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'll, I'll lose to that card. Like as long as because it, 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 I think really what it comes down to is you're not you're no longer losing to a singular card like you were with Cataclysm, and I think that's precisely what they're looking to avoid. I think it's unlikely we're going to see many or any uh, like entire hand discards moving forward, just because like it seems to be that they've uh, um you know learned that that's not something that can be done in the wild format um with how many again like how much damage you can accumulate from hand so um I, yeah it's it's possible there's something there it but it doesn't that nothing what that you describe sounds nearly as strong nor as uh, toxic as what disco lock was so like i'll happily take those decks uh, and those matchups because like you can remove their stuff. You can play around it um, in some degree. You can punish it not developing on board by just blasting it in the face and you don't lose the game on the spot. So, um, But, yeah, I, I definitely agree that, you know, I there could be something or could be uses for Cataclysm in the future because, like, I mean, you don't need that many from, uh, like, discard payoffs in order to make a five-minute clear the board um, worthwhile. Um, the I guess the one bummer is that we do kind of like officially delete Macathune Warlock, which mm. you know is kind of collateral damage here. I think it was in certain meta games not always the most fun because it just turns like like when things do slow down, it does turn things into like ninety ten matchups where you're just praying for the Mutanus like the or hoping that you're a shaman with devolve or something be to make dirty rat actually do something. Um, I don't know. I'm personally not going to be too upset about losing mecha Thune warlock, but I understand that, uh, that, you know, that that is a pretty nostalgic deck. That's kind of collateral damage in the process. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, like, I, I understand people's frustrations with mecha Thune warlock. I personally do not mind that it's deleted because it was not a play pattern that I also enjoyed very much, but I do understand there was a nostalgia factor there. Corb, you were going through this whole control discard warlock, and all I could think about while you were saying that was, all right, Corb is advocating for control quest discard warlock because that would be your win con with infinite three twos. <laughs> and I'm just all like, right, all right, Corb has endorsed it. That's his idea. He's pushing for it. Somebody make it happen. Hey, um, no spoilers, all right? I gotta wait until uh, we get it back. Did I, did I spoil the next Corb? Corb brew? Um, oh, yeah, possibly, possibly. Yeah. Um, I do find it a little, like, what do you guys think about the actual change, though, doing this Kata to discard to instead of just, like, putting Kata to six mana? Because um, that's, like, a, another clear option that feels like it would fix the problem in the short term. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I think with all of these, uh, in particular, Pillager and Cataclysm, it seemed like they were pretty dead set on uh, sort of future-proofing the cards. Like... There was also talk about Pillager to 7, and sure, that would, like, slow it down. Um, but, you know, throw in another coin generator, and you're just right back in the, the same spot, right? Or, like, like, slowing it down a turn still is, you know, potentially 5 mana, or turn 5 uh, combos as well. So, like, I don't, I don't think that solves the problem entirely. And I think that moving Cataclysm to 6 probably is maybe more, more of a complete change just because of the expired merchant interactions, but still runs the risk of, you know, running into issues like with maybe just going all in on copying um, Fist of Jaraxxus or something like that and using that as your source of damage or going back to the spell damage uh, version and uh, bursting people down that way. So, like, I, I think it was just aimed at being... A signal that like these types of strategies are not okay in the format regardless of how if they're less consistent or um slower it yeah. was quite funny that people were begging like blizzard we need to slow down these decks and then blizzard were like oh we'll slow them down we'll, we'll slow them down <laughs> real good <laughs> it just took them out yeah that's that's kind of yeah. how i like saw the changes was, i didn't really read into them trying to change 
you know, the function of the card too much more so than making sure that when they killed these decks that they stayed dead and that, like, seven mana Pillager wasn't still going to be a thing or that, like, a five or six mana Cataclysm wouldn't let Disco Warlock still be a thing and that when they when they killed the decks, they wanted them to stay dead. And so that's kind of how I read those changes. And then I, I, I'm pretty sure that they did a very good job of doing that. So, yeah. 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 I, uh, I, I, just touching on the Disco Warlock, I think it's also when they go back to playing these three twos and three eights or maybe even Doom Guards and they're playing like aggro Discard Warlock, it's still a board based deck, which is what I think they envisioned for that deck to begin with. Right. And instead of like the Tome Tamper and Cataclysm, like OTK you from hand. And, yeah, yes, it's another, like, aggro deck in the format, but I also think it's a lot easier to fight against and a lot less frustrating to play against than what we had, which I think is also a good thing. So uh, I'm super also, happy with all these changes. Yeah, yeah. there's also failure rates associated with, like, not being able to discard your entire hand to ensure that the soul barrages go face and not clearing the board at the same time. So, like, um, aside from Expired Merchant and uh, Nightshade Matron, you can't really choose what cards you get yeah, are getting discarded in certain situations. So, like, you have the old frustrations <laughs> of uh, of Disco Lock, of Soulfire discarding Soulfire when you have Lethal, and that kind of thing that um, isn't fun as the player, but, like, it seems to be what the mechanic was balanced around for a while. All right. Um, and then last but not least, I do want to circle back around to Construct Quarter. Uh, Corp single-handedly got this card nerfed because it was totally nerfed for, for well, power level reasons. Um, have you guys actually tried this out and even Death Knight, or have we like got any stats rolling in on it just replay? Like, is this card like good, even in at four mana? Yeah, it, it's still pretty good and standard. Uh, uh, I, I assume it's even like really, really solid in even Death Knight in particular, because uh, even Death Knight is a the unholy version in particular is a deck where the highest value cards all perform super great because the deck just gasses out and just doesn't have stuff, and so like Marrow Sylve uh school teacher like these were always super top performing cards um and construct court is just like another value engine right like you just play it out and that your hero power is just one mana make a four five rush for three times like that's that's great um so yeah same seems good in the deck um man that frost aggro dk i mean that's the probably the strongest standard deck ever right like that deck even if you didn't change the low thub you just came over and queued it up in wild it's probably like Maybe the second best deck in the format behind Even Shaman, which is just like it's insane. It was, it, that was the strongest standard deck of all time. I, I think it's fair to say. Damn, that's also, a strong statement. Just well, like what other standard deck could you just bring port the exact thirty into Wild and it's tier one? Like, has that ever happened? I don't think so. The I think the maybe the closest would be like demon hunter release or like galakron shaman release but those you actually like you made changes to the deck to make them better with with one uh, galakron though. shaman was close that's that's a good yeah. shot actually like i don't think i was changing many cards in that one i mean you i'm sure you probably just slammed in a lot of a shutter walk and called it a day <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i think shutter was in the format at that time instead or uh oh, god it, it was there maybe. for like the three or four months of that one expansion yeah, sure. so yeah. just okay. loath them. Yeah, <laughs> just, just loath them. Imagine uh, the, that. The hey, normal core imagine, recipe. Yeah, can you imagine? Whoa. <laughs> it reminds me of those recipes that say, like, just add water or just add milk. Just just mm. add loath them. Just a dash of loath them and you're good to go. Um, yeah. Man, is if, is it still, like, a very strong standard deck, even with Contra yes. Quarter at 4? Yes. It is not, it's not the best standard deck. Um, that would be um, Shadow Undead Priest. Ooh, we made it uh but yeah frost aggro is still probably borderline tier one like still very good i mean that just means to me that like in the next you know year and a half once we start getting some like wild exclusive death knight cards like that's just one of those decks to keep an eye on then right of the synergies and things like that it's it's kind of sweet yeah i also would just say that if you're a, a player that's like a pirate rogue and even shaman even death knight you know the double-edged sword of beating up on all those aggro decks plus farming that, that golden death knight portrait and just put it out there i very good deck yeah and w with specifically construct quarter in mind like to corb's point yes it's a it's a value engine but it's also a value engine that like swings the board back in your favor which is like what the even death knight wants to do to begin with is like punish other board centric decks and that just fits right in line with that that game plan so yeah it's a little bit slower than it was when it was three mana but that 
makes it playable in the in the even version which will probably happily accept it i feel like there was some marginal cards already in the deck that could easily make way for a construct quarter yeah it's like oh no they know if to buy in mana and it's like yeah but our hero power costs one less so <laughs> you know yeah uh all right great patch overall uh man a lot better vibes, at least on between the three of us, about the format. So definitely counting it as a dub. <laughs> uh, the vibes are immaculate, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So great job, devs. Appreciate y'all. Um, let us know down in the comments, guys, whether you guys are enjoying the patch as well. Uh, let us know, you know, hit or miss. Uh, what else you guys would like to potentially see played in that, or changed in that second wave. Uh, Got to keep popping that copium, all right, for that second wave of that wild summit change. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a shorter episode, but we're happy. We're good. All, all is good and wild. Um, Corbin Ruffle, thanks for joining me week after week. Uh, I, I say week after week, but just a heads up, probably no episode next week because the two of these guys were going to be out of town. Um, so unless there's any drastic news, dra if the second patch of the Wild Summit comes out, we'll do an emergency episode. Uh, mm. But uh, the two of these guys are going to be out of town, so probably no, no episode next week. Uh, but thanks for joining me this week. <laughs> let the people know where they can find you guys enjoying the new patch and the new content uh yeah you can find me streaming on both twitch and youtube at raffle and you can always find me at corbett on twitch or corbett games on youtube and twitter thanks for joining me guys and uh thanks to all the listeners that listen all the way to the end appreciate you guys a ton and we will see you guys again next time later <laughs>